in, in one way or another trying to counteract that. But we as scientists are not doing a, a, a good job at explaining what we're doing or why we're doing it. And so I guess let me ask you an a question, because uh, one thing, you know, when we've compared our different techniques and, and, um, uh, of trying to reach people, and, and you know, I've argued that I, I have some problems sometimes with, with um, the approach you've taken, uh, because um, I think it, it, well, I have had some, we can talk about that, um, and maybe we will, but the, 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 um, the point is that we, if, if we continue to, to alienate, as scientists seem to do with the public, then, then we, we're not, we shouldn't be surprised if they, um, if they don't support science. And so the question is how to overcome that, and I wanted to ask you the following question. Which is, which is more important to you, um, disabusing people of false notions or convincing them to try and learn about the real things. I'm, I'm always getting this problem. It, it's, it's, um, I know, and that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Um, it's this matter of seduction and... Uh, which is the word I've used. Which is, the, which is and your, I your, your word. Trouble because um, and, and I had a little exchange with Neil deGrasse Tyson at the um, Beyond Belief mm -hmm. co conference, and he, he took me to task in very much the same terms as, as you have. Um, I suppose in the, in the particular case of the evolution creation controversy where I have been accused of uh, rocking the boat and of, of spoiling the case for our side in the education debate, uh, it, it was put to me most starkly by um, Rothschild who is the lead lawyer uh, um, for our side in the, in the Dover, Pennsylvania case. And we had lunch together, we got on very well, and, and we talked a lot. And then at the end he said, well, thank goodness we didn't call you as an expert witness. <laughs> and he was absolutely right. Uh, I, would, I would have been uh, a, a disaster as an expert witness because the lawyer for the other side would simply have said, uh, Mr. Dawkins, is it, is it true that you came to your atheism through evolution? And I would have had to say yes. And then he would have simply have said, uh, my case rests yeah. because, that, because that's, that's enough to damn it. So um, the seduction technique there would, would be to go to uh, go out to people and say, look, I, I appreciate, I, I respect your religion. I, th I, I think your religion's great, but your religion is perfectly compatible with evolution. And uh, you can believe, if you like, that God set evolution going. Maybe God helps evolution over some of the difficult jumps or... or um, uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't, well, I don't know. There, you know, so I don't, I don't think. Obviously, I've been accused of, of the seduction side, and and and, and, and which I'm pr proud of. Um, but uh, I think the point is that you have to. Uh, it's you don't have to go bend over backwards that much. But I think that the largest impact I've ever had is going to fundamentalist colleges and saying just simply a simple statement that you don't have to be an atheist to believe in evolution. Yeah. And and that. Is so. Rem I've had kids come up to me and say, "I've never heard anyone say that." I always thought you had. How to could they possibly not have heard anyone say that? Did they ever talk to a clergyman, a bishop, an well, archbishop? The, the clergy, no. You see, this isn't the Church of England. Okay. Um, uh, th this is, uh, no, it's true. These kids, every Sunday, from the time they're too young to think, um, and and that's why both you and I absolutely agree that I think it's sort of child abuse to, to subject children to that. But but. Uh, but they are told that. They are told that in this country, and that is why many of them just have this gut reaction, because if I have to be an atheist to believe in evolution, I clearly am not going to be, believe in evolution because it's a threat to my belief. But if you just tell them it doesn't require that, then it, it is eye-opening and useful. At the same time, I think it's disingenuous not to point out that there are tensions, and, and our mutual friend Steven Weinberg, uh, phys another physicist, has put it, I think, most eloquently by saying, S science doesn't make it impossible to believe in God, it just makes it possible to not believe in yes. God. Yes. Well, and I want to go further than that. I, I, I think that, um, as you were talking then, I thought I could put it exactly the other way around. You can go to these people in their, in their um, churches, fundamentalist churches, and you say, look, you don't have to be an atheist to believe in evolution. Now, if your aim is to propagandize in favor of evolution, that obviously is the best seduction technique. 
But if your aim is to kill religion, as mine is, yeah. then, then, uh, no, then, then uh, just, just let me finish. If, you're, if your aim is to kill religion, then since evolution is manifestly true, then if, if there are people out there who really believe that, uh, that, it, it, that if you are an evolutionist, you've got to be an atheist, then all I've got to do is to persuade them of evolution, which should be comparatively easy, since the, uh, since the evidence is overwhelming, and I'll turn them all into atheists. Yeah, which, uh, well, yeah, that was, okay. But here's why, you know, I was thinking about this uh, last night, um, uh, comparing our different approaches, which a lot of people have compared in different contexts. But I really think the reason, actually, I've come to appreciate much more than I had before your approach in the times we've interacted, th which really is one of raising consciousness. You've said yeah, that sure. many times. Yeah. And I really think that is vitally important. And my own consciousness has been raised by you in many ways, and not just in the times we've talked, but in, in your writing. Uh, but I think... I, I don't think you're convincing many people to be atheists. What you're doing is convincing people who are, who are uh, receptive to those ideas already not to be afraid to, uh, to have those ideas in public, which I think is very important. So in some sense, I think we're speaking to complementary groups. At, at some level, the resonance, the, the number of copies your book has sold, I think is an example that you're really reaching people who, ins who, who are sympathetic, but in some sense needed ammunition and, and an understanding and a coherent picture of this. And so I think that the approach you're taking works extremely well and is vitally important for those people who are receptive. And I guess the approach I've tr tried to take most recently is the approach for people who aren't receptive. And that's seduction. Yeah. And that's to say, and the end result may be hoping that, that they might think one way or another about God, but it actually isn't. It really is hoping that they'll open, just open their minds enough to realize that, that, that the, um, the real world, the world as it actually is, is not evil. It's neither good nor evil, but it's remarkable. And the way to understand the physical world is to use science. And so I think we're really actually speaking at different audiences. I, it, I'm not convinced, in fact, I'm pretty convinced that, that and maybe you can give me counterexamples, that you're not, that the confirmed, deeply faithful probably resent and close their minds to what you're saying so early that you're really not turning them around. What you're doing is, is a very important task, which is to point out that look, there, there's a large body of the American public, and, and a, it may be a minority, but it's a bigger minority than, most, than many individual religions that actually don't believe in God, and it's about time that politicians understood that. And in fact, um, this really came home to me during the, this presidential election, and one of the reasons I, I've been promoting, trying to get this debate ha to happen, yeah, with, uh, which, and I'm pleased to say Rich is wearing one of our pins, I'll, um, <laughs> as I'm wearing one of his. But um, uh, that when, when, when Mitt Romney, Gave, that, uh, gave this speech, which was supposed to be the equivalent of a speech that John Kennedy had given many years earlier about separation of church and state, and his speech was exactly the opposite. In fact, the speech basically said, there is no room in the state for those that don't go to church. Yeah. And, and doesn't matter which church you go to, and, as long and, as you go to one. one and for one, yeah. that, it's vitally important yeah. that, that, that you raise the consciousness of the media and politicians and of individuals that there are a large bunch of people who... who who don't believe in God and they're not bad, they're not worse, they're not anything. And so it's vitally important, but I do think we're speaking to different audiences. And I, I wanted to see what you thought. I think that's fine, and, and uh, maybe that's the right way to go about it. I mean, there are these two audiences.